OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Uh, good morning, everyone. We'll get started. I'd like to start on time. Uh, my name is Paul Young. Thank you for joining me from Chula Vista. We are at the Putting English to Work 1 and 2 on Canvas session. I'm in Los Angeles. I, I am a OTAN subject matter expert, but my day job is the, uh, the Los Angeles Unified School District's Division of Adult and Career Education's EL Civics Advisor. Many years ago, I was the uh, distance learning advisor at uh, LAUSD, and uh, the distance learning program produced the Putting English to Work series. And they have been used in the division uh, for, uh, actually across the state for quite a few decades now. And we could probably safely say that millions, millions of students have learned English through our series. So I'm really thrilled to be here to share with you the most, the latest iteration of putting English to work. Okay, and uh, they originated on VHS, DVD. 12 years ago, they were uh, transferred to Moodle as online courses. And now I am involved with OTAN's project to put uh, these courses on Canvas with H5P interactivity. So I'm really excited to show that to you today. We're gonna start with the agenda. I'm going to give you some compelling reasons why you should be using putting English to work online with your students. And then the meat of the session is the H Canvas and H5P demo. I'm gonna walk, just walk through the, uh, some of the exercises in putting English to work one and show you how uh, things have been updated in a very uh, cool and interactive manner. And then we're, we're gonna have to talk about, you know, the obstacles our students face in uh, online learning. And many of you already have a lot of experience, probably more than I do. And uh, you know what they are, but it's always good to talk about them as a group and share ideas. And then I'm gonna offer some keys to success and how to make this online class work for you and your students. And then I'm gonna issue a challenge to you, teachers on why you should adopt this course for your students. And then we're gonna talk about how you can get access. And guess what? For most of you, it'll be free. Now you can't beat that today, right? In 2023, all right? So why PETW one, two, and three? Okay, I know, I know in uh, <laughs> my first slide, uh, the session is about PTW one and two, right? That's true, but PTW three is coming. Okay, so I, 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 I couldn't resist putting it on here. Okay, so if you get started today with your students, or I'm, you know, maybe next week, right? Depending on how fast we can move, uh, you get started uh, with your students using putting things to work one and two, they'll be ready for three when we roll it out uh, next year. Okay, so why, why use putting this to work? Well, it was created by ESL teachers. ESL teachers in California adult education, teachers who know our student population and what they need. The course was not created by, um, you know, publishers who uh, have uh, profit margins to consider, you know, and their quarterly reports to uh, Wall Street. These were created by ESL teachers who have an intimate understanding of the student population, where they're from, the challenges they face assimilating, and uh, the language and literacy skills they need to succeed in their new country. Okay. The three courses, putting English to work one, two, and three, are beginning low, beginning high, and intermediate low. And they are based on the Los Angeles Unified School District Division of Adult and Career Education's. 
ESL course outlines. These are complete courses with life skills, grammar, exercises, and assessments. In total, there are 68 half hour videos plus workbook activities that includes the exercises that I spoke about and the unit tests. And here's one of my favorite parts, automated correction of exercises and assessments. So you spend less time correcting your students' work and more time interacting with them and helping them succeed. Next, the episode stories are our students' stories. These are like half hour TV shows. They are full of characters who look like our students, a very diverse cast, characters from many different countries, and they're trying to learn English and find their way in their, in their communities. And their stories, the challenges they face are exactly what your students face every day, trying to adapt to uh, life here in the US. Okay, so basically your students will see themselves in these stories and it will have a meaningful impact on, uh, on, on what they learned, okay? And finally, of course, learning online is a 21st century life skill, right? If we get our students to start using uh, their computers and taking advantage of their internet connections, they're gonna be able to have an easier time looking for work later, finding affordable housing, accessing community resources. All of this is online now, right? So for all these reasons, you should definitely consider these three courses for your school and students, okay? And now the fun part. Putting English to work one, two, and three had been on Moodle and used widely across the state for about eight years. And uh, we spent the last two years uh, migrating the lessons to Canvas with H5P interactivity. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of my slide right now. I'm gonna stop sharing, and I'm gonna go to my uh, putting English to work one course on Canvas. So just give me a second to change my share screen settings, and I'm gonna go here. And this is the uh, if you look at the very uh, top upper left corner, it says pause. PETW1 Sandbox. This is where I'm playing around, assembling the courses with uh, uh, the new H5P uh, accessibility features. So uh, when you request this course, it might not look exactly like this, the interface, but the content will be all here. Okay, so if I close this, you can see that I have 20 units of putting English to work one. This is the beginning low. And by the title, you can guess what the topic is for, for uh, each unit, right? What's your name? Where do you live? The calendar, special occasions. Tell me about your family. And if I click the arrow to the left, I'm gonna see the contents of the entire unit. Let's start at the top. At the top, you'll always find episode one, you'll always find the, uh, the video. This is a snapshot from the original workbook, the paper workbook, and you can see the, the summary of the life skills, vocabulary, and the grammar. And here, there's a synopsis of what happens in this episode in terms of the characters. Again, another life skill summary and a grammar summary. If I click on this link, watch episode one, a new window will open up and the video will play. You know, Canvas has a, has a smartphone app for Android and um, iPhone, and these courses look great. Okay, so all your student would have to do is, is download the app, and it's free for their Android phone or their uh, iPhone, okay? So I'm going to click on Watch Video, Episode 1. And hit Play.
Hello, I'm Liz Chan. In this television series, you will learn to speak, listen to, read, and write in English. You will learn to introduce yourself. I say my first name and my last name. I'm Sylvie Marquez, and I give you my hand. Okay, so uh, obviously we're not going to watch that whole episode, but you can see that the video uh, starts playing instantly. The image quality, uh, although not high definition, is, is quite good for uh, an educational video and very acceptable. The audio quality is outstanding. And this is the, uh, the every unit begins with a summary of its content and the opportunity to watch the video. If I click on the modules, I'll go back to the, my main list, okay? And we're just gonna work down and, and view a couple of these exercises, okay? Let's look at classroom vocabulary. So we, we've seen the video, and now we have a, a nice visual uh, drag and drop exercise. Okay, so uh, pencil, and, and let me tell you, this looks great on, on the cell phone. Okay, look at the text, the text is big. The pictures are uh, the, the very same pictures from the book. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, purposely making a few mistakes here. Uh, I, I actually do have an understanding of the, of the grammar. And I mean the vocabulary, but let's see what happens when you uh, don't get some things right, okay. So well, there's a couple of questions in the chat. One, one oh yeah. Time. How long has this been around? And then the second one was, does the teacher need to know how to use Canvas in order to implement this? <laughs> uh, it's been around for uh, putting English to work. They started working backwards. Uh, you know, is, is it OK if I answer these questions at the end? Because these questions uh, don't relate to the demo. I, I'd like you to watch the demo. And if you have questions about the demo, that, that would be good. Like, for example, Paul, what happens if the students get it wrong? Uh, how many uh, opportunities to have? Do they have to get this exercise right? And can they view their answers? Uh, questions related to what we're doing would be ideal. Uh, other questions we'll have time to answer later. Is, is that okay with everyone? So can, can you give me a thumbs up? So. Uh, Okay, I got a couple of thumbs up. That's great. So I'm just trying to do things in context, right? So, you know, I could give you the demo and we could ask about uh, teacher responsibilities, uh, student records, and then that takes us away from uh, the flow of, of uh, the presentation, okay? I promise you, you we'll have time to answer those questions. Uh, and I have, I have a, a session um, time for this uh, session to, to do that, okay? So what uh, here, you see, uh, I have a few correct, I have a few mistakes. There's a score, I can click retry, and I get to do it. And look, look how nicely those uh, vocabulary words are shuffled back to the bottom of uh, the screen, right? That, that just, uh, that's just really nice, okay? And this is it's a big visual exercise. The, actually, the first one that the level one students will see, right? It's very user-friendly, okay? Let's watch, it's your turn, okay? And if you're wondering, uh, do teachers need to know Canvas? You know, it's always good to know Canvas, but as you can see, the, just navigating it is, is not difficult and uh, whatever you need to learn is learnable. Look at the alphabet page in your book. Work on your book at home. Watch and listen. Look at the alphabet on your paper. When I say a letter, Point to the letter on your paper. Point to the letter you hear. Let's spell this word. P-E-N. It's a pen. Look, so the video stops and the student is prompted to interact with these pictures. And once I click check, it gives me the uh, result and I can continue. Yes, Miguel, it's a pen. B O 
okay. It's a... Uh, if I get it wrong, I get it, I get a retry. I can try it again, okay? And uh, I can check it again and continue. Yes, okay, here's a long... And here, if you're watching this on a nice computer screen, you can make this video full screen and that interactivity will still uh, function very well. So keep in mind, this is beginning low and this is their first experience with this course and it's very visual and interactive, okay? I'm gonna go back to modules. Notice I'm going to modules and my entire course is here and I can choose any one of these items. Okay. I'm just working my way down through the course. Okay. This is a, this is one of the fun exercises for students. 26 letters. Each letter is very important. Watch and listen. Yo. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, Okay, so that's one of the, the nice features about the beginning low course. Every episode has a music, music video that features the vocabulary, or in this case, you know, since this is episode one for beginning low, it's going to be the alphabet. But uh, every episode has a music video that the students can chant or sing along with with the life skill vocabulary of that unit. And after practicing this alphabet, the student has a chance to record, record uh, their own voice uh, saying the alphabet, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the modules. There's a question about the canvas shell. Again, we'll talk about that later, okay? Arrange the letters of the alphabet. Let's try that one. So uh, put the letters of the alphabet in the correct order. Start from the left side of the top row. So look, you, we have all these letters and they're draggable. They're movable. So I'm going to uh, put the letters in the correct alphabetical order, okay? And you get to submit your answers here and, and get a score or try it again, all right? So very, very fun for beginning low. Let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, let's see. Let's take a look at write the vocabulary word, okay? Look, these are flashcards. Look at the picture. What is it? It's, uh, I'm gonna type the answer here, book. Pencil. So there's a great variety of, of activities that students are engaged in and they're, they're visual, they're dynamic, there's pictures, there's audio, there's text, there's video. And it's a lot of fun for beginning low students. It's very easy to access, okay? I'm just going uh, to the left to go to the entire course and I go to, to the right column to get into the individual exercises, okay? So earlier we had this Your Turn uh, interactive video and here is another one. Excuse me, can I have more water please? So uh, we'll, we'll just skip here. The video is, is, uh, is, is viewed twice. The first time students can just watch it passively to try to process the, uh, the content of the story. And the video is uh, offered can again. Can I have more water, please? With a, with a fill in the blank exercise this time, okay? So the last time we saw the last time we saw uh, interactive video, it was a drag and drop moving the pictures around 
Now it's, it's, it's text, okay? It's a fill in the blank exercise, a close exercise. Oh, and how about some coffee and some of Lucy's pumpkin pie heated with ice cream? Okay, I, I think Miguel doesn't understand, right? So we'll, do, we'll try that one. Your waitress will bring your- Okay, so the interactive videos, did. it could be dragging pictures and dropping them or uh, text-based grammar exercises, okay? Uh, Francesca has a, has a question, are these activities part of the original PTW or have you added these? Uh, these activities, the, uh, well, uh, the original had these type of exercises, had in terms of content. But this interactivity is a feature called H5P that OTAN uh, uh, purchased and integrated with Canvas. And that's what makes this special, okay? So it's Canvas with H, uh, H5P interactivity, all right? Yeah, yes, I added these using H5P, okay. <laughs> all right, uh, we just did that one. Okay, uh, let's look at the, uh, let's look at this one, verb to be, okay? The verb to be. And here's a, a screenshot from the original lesson. See, if I click on this, I can make this full screen. So this screen, uh, can can everyone see the, the entire screen? Give me a thumbs up or uh, is, is okay, great. Thank you, Andrea. So uh, this is a screenshot from the original book, okay? And uh, there's a little uh, instruction here that that I've added. And if you scroll through, it, it's basically a fill in the blank exercise, right? It's uh, let's see, let's see. It is a pen. It is not a book and students can get immediate feedback okay and uh what if i say she she i'm just gonna what happens when we make a mistake oh there's a there's a there's a eyeball here show solution and because this part of the exercise um there's a there's a learning moment for the student here. The the answers is provided, okay? And uh, they have a chance to try it again, okay? So, you know, we provide the answers and that's adhering to the uh, traditional course in the way it was set up uh, where these exercises, where there are predetermined answers, would have an answer key at the back of the book for students to check their own work because these courses were developed for distance learning, okay? Uh, which is a, a kind of independent study, right? So students were always able to check their answers uh, by themselves for the, for the workbook exercises, not the unit tests, however, okay? The unit tests, uh, we do not provide the answers for the students, but only the teachers will grade the unit test. Okay. All right. Okay. So Michelle, I mean, how do we get it? Like I said, I'll, I'll answer that question at the, at the end of the session. Okay. So, because I want to show you the course. Okay. This is uh, Let's look at the next one. How about uh, questions and short answers? Again, we have a screenshot from the original book, and now we have multiple choice exercises, okay? So we've seen drag and drop, interactive video, flashcards, multiple choice, fill in the blank. There's just a great variety of activities and look how much fun that is for, uh, for level one, right? Uh, that the, the, the screen page is not crowded with text and instructions. Uh, there's a very elegant interface and it's easy for level one students to process that information, okay? 
And look here, a crossword puzzle. Okay, this is, you, know, you might have students from some cultures who, who aren't familiar with a, uh, a crossword puzzle, so you might have to demo this one, right? Uh, let's see, I'm looking at number one across, my address is, uh, maybe this is the question, what is your address? Okay, so, so this is one of those where you might have to uh, just introduce your student to the concept of like the crossword puzzle across and down and 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 try to view the uh, the number of letters as as a as a as a clue to what the answer might be. Okay, so I'm going to go back to modules and let's take a look at uh, what's in your backpack. Okay, so what's in your backpack? So you can already see that this interface is a little different, right? So what we can gather is that this is not H5P. This is a native Canvas exercise. And if I click preview, uh, let me read what this says here on the very top in, in red. I'll make that a little bit bigger. It says, uh, your teacher will grade this exercise after you've completed the unit. So the student will look at this, read the conversation, and the student will respond to this question. What is in your backpack? Write the object that you have in your backpack or bag. So the student will, will click into the text box and say, I have a book. So obviously every student is gonna answer this differently, right? Depending on the content of their backpack and how fluent they are in English, right? So therefore the student will submit the exercise but not see a grade, right? There, uh, there would not be a grade here. And this is one of the, activities where the teacher will have to come and review it and enter and manually enter a grade for the student okay and uh good news there aren't too many of these okay most of these activities are are h5p based and their uh the assessments uh, the feedback is is automated okay so the teacher will be spending more time just uh, helping students, uh, you know, understand the lesson instead of, you know, the, the, the tedious task of grading every exercise in the learning management system, okay? So again, if you see this and the preview button, it's a sign that it's a native Canvas activity and most likely the teacher will have to come in and grade this uh, personally, okay? So uh, uh, there's a dictation exercise. Click the audio and, and type, the, type the sentence you hear, right? Listen to the audio and write what you hear, okay? L look at the variety, the variety of exercises that are available, right? Uh, narrative reading, okay, this is the interesting one, okay? So narrative reading is the comprehension exercise. You know how in the end of every, uh, ESL book, at the end of every unit of every ESL book, there's usually a, a, a narrative, a story that students read and answer comprehension questions on, okay? So this one, you can tell, this is a native Canvas exercise. It's not H5P. If I click on preview, I can see the story here. This is a screenshot from the original book, and I can hear the story read. Unit 1, Exercise 15. Carlos Nunez is a student. Carlos Nunez is a student at Main Street Adult School. He's in an English class. His teacher is Mr. Edwards. Carlos's friends are Maria and Louise. So here's a prompt. Answer the following questions with complete sentences. 
Okay, so I have to write a complete sentence. His last name is Nunez. What's his teacher's name? His name is Mr. Edwards. What? Instead of saying uh, the school's name is, I'm just going to say it's Main Street Adult School. Uh, to Michael's question, yes, it, the, the learning management system tracks all student activities, okay? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this whole exercise just so that you guys can see uh, their, their name. Please forgive me. I, I always get nervous when I type it in front of an audience on Zoom. So I'm gonna click submit quiz. And uh, hey, look, I got, I got it, it graded this for me and I, I had all excellent. And what you, what you see here is uh, our additional possible answers, right? Because I said his last name is Nunez. I could have said uh, Carlos's last name is Nunez. In that case, that would have been correct. So this is a this is something that was uh, <clears throat> developed. Excuse me. This was a feature that was developed in the original Moodle version of this online course where for this type of activity, we still wanted it to be in interactive and allow the learning management system to give the student immediate feedback. So if we did it the, uh, the traditional way, we would have just put one answer, right? But as you know, the, the student could have said, Carlos's last name is Nunez or it's Nunez, right? Uh, with the apostrophe, right? The contraction, or it is Nunez, or Nunez is his last name. These were all correct answers. Okay, so even an exercise like this, which would normally require the teacher to correct, here we're giving students the various options. And if they get it wrong, they can come and see uh, what the right answer is. And try and try it again. All right. So that that's pretty that's pretty cool. Narrative reading. Okay. So he, oh, here's one called the. Uh, okay. What's your name? Is okay. Do we recognize this? Is this H five P or native to Canvas? Somebody give me an answer in the chat. <clears throat> Okay, uh, no one's typing. Okay, oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, Laurem, Andrea, Catherine, you guys get A's for today. Thank you. So, preview. We'll get the same prompt, right? Obviously, because everyone's going to type in something different, right? What is your name? I'm going to say Paul. Catherine's going to say Catherine. And, uh, the teacher will come and look at this. Okay, so the two, the student is 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 made aware of that with this uh, sentence in red. Okay, look at the number of activities here, and only two of them require teacher grading. Okay, read and speak. Okay, here's an interesting one. Okay, look, read the sentences and questions. Start course. I'm gonna click start course. And, Push to speak. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click this button and I'm gonna speak. Okay. How are you? Hey, look, I got that right. What is your name? Uh oh. That one was wrong. Show solution. 
I said, oh, look at this. It told me what I said. <laughs> it says, this is what you have to say. So I want to try it again. Okay. What is your phone number? All right. So that, that's pretty cool. Okay. I, I like that feature. All right. Uh, amongst many. So again, the variety of activities, especially for beginning low. Okay. Let's, let's, let's uh, take a look at this grammar check and see what that's about. Oh, so here, you're just going to oh, choose the correct sentence. Okay, so it, a book, that, that doesn't sound right. My from is El Salvador. That doesn't sound Oh, she is a teacher. That sounds good. Choose the correct question. How you are? That doesn't sound right. Where are you from? Yeah, that sounds right. And, and the, the, the number, the items just uh, slide by after you click the answer. Okay, so uh, another uh, fun feature. Okay, so the student completes the exercises and now has to do the unit test. Okay, the unit test tests the student's uh, mastery of the competencies of this unit. Okay, so therefore, okay, what is Marta Otega, what is her first name? So if, uh, the student chooses the wrong answer, they don't get an option to view the correct answer because it's the unit test. All they can do is retry it. Of course, in this case, it's, it's easy because there's just two options, right? If the first one's not correct, it's gonna be the other one, right? But, uh, <clears throat> so check, okay, the student does not get the correct answer, has to, uh, the student has to do it again. Okay, so because this is the unit test, right? Again, there's a multiple choice, fill in the blanks, all, all related to the content of this uh, unit. So here's a drag and drop, right? So it's basically a, a verb conjugation exercise of the verb to be, right? Uh, he is, look at this activity. We're, we're dragging words around. And uh, the variety is just uh, very, very nice for students, you know? Okay, so that's putting English to work one. I'm just gonna uh, go to putting English to work two really quickly and just show you some of the main, uh, it looks the same, right? The episode one is on top, uh, but you're gonna see a lot more of these kind of activities where teachers uh, do have to um, uh, uh, review. Okay, so here we know this is a native Canvas exercise. I'm going to click on preview. And these stories are from the book. So the students, uh, Marta and Jose are married and they have a beautiful family. So Marta and Jose are characters in the stories, in the videos. Okay, so they watch the Marta and Jose in the video, and now they get to read about them and they can also hear the audio. Looking for an apartment, part one. Read the stories and answer the questions with complete sentences. Marta and Jose are married and they have a beautiful family. He is a gardener and she is a student. Okay, that audio quality is, is really uh, outstanding. So students, this just does wonders for comprehension, right? They, they see the video, they see the actors uh, play Marta and Jose, they, they watch this scene and now, now they get to read about it and they can read it and they can hear it and now they're gonna answer these questions. So they're gonna answer it in their own manner. Some students will uh, write grammatically correct answers, some students I might not, uh, they might have the same correct content, a few might not. And then uh, th these are the kind of exercises that uh, the putting this to work to teachers will come and correct, okay? So uh, that ends my uh, demo and I'm gonna go back to my uh, presentation slides. And now, I am 
able to answer more of your questions uh, regarding uh, other uh, related uh, subject matter. Okay, so uh, I want to open my chat window so I can see. Um, is this uh, Andrea had a question? Is this going to be shared? Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to. You're going to submit a request, and I'll show you at the very end of the slide how how to get this course. Okay, you're going to submit a a request to uh, O10. Okay, so uh, I, I'm going to continue with my slide presentation. Feel free to type into the chat, and I'll I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out for your question. Okay, uh, how do we? Oh yeah, Michelle, how do we get it? Just just wait till the end. Okay, I want to give you the email uh, address to make your request. Okay, so. Of course, there are obstacles, right? Uh, computer, internet access. But someone asked earlier, right? Does it work on a smartphone? It sure does. And Canvas has a great student app for Android and iPhone, and it's free. Okay, and they can go to their in they can access it on any computer at school, at their local library. It looks great on all devices. The uh, the iPad, smartphone, computer. So help your student with access. Give them options. Show them how to use it on their phone. Show them how cool it looks on their phone. Many of our students, I used to teach in uh, downtown Los Angeles, which is near you know the Lakers, uh, the basketball play, the Lakers. Uh, stadium and some of my students worked in malibu that's like a two-hour bus ride okay they can study students who do this through distance learning can study on the bus okay with their smartphones okay basic computer skills so h5p as i showed you is very intuitive interactive majority of the exercises are uh, self-correcting. You as a teacher are free to help students with their basic computer skills, all right? Typing skills used to be a huge problem, but now there are so many free uh, websites to teach people how to type. I think typing.com is, is probably my favorite one, okay? Self-motivation. Okay, that's a, that's a big challenge. You know, independent study for anyone, right? Even for native English speakers uh, is a challenge. But with H5P, I think once you get students started, you stay in touch with them, you encourage them, and they see how, how engaging it is. And especially when uh, they see the progress that they're making in language acquisition, that is gonna improve their stuff motivation. And not only that, but together with their digital skills, right? Their digital skills are improving, their English language skills are improving, and um, that, that is gonna, that's gonna be the, the key factor, okay? Let's see, Lauren has a question. I think it's compatible. You know, Lauren, that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't have any experience with screen readers, and so therefore I, I haven't I haven't checked it with a screen reader. Uh, you might just want to Google that question later on. Okay. So, so uh, the the PTW Moodle courses was used uh, uh, by a number of teachers uh, across the. Uh, the state, I don't, I don't have any exact numbers, but it was uh, hosted on OTAN's Moodle site for about uh, eight years, I believe. And it, was, it, it really gained in popularity during the pandemic when, you know, uh, it was uh, very, uh, when everyone had to go online, okay? So some keys to success I'd like to suggest, okay? Evaluate each student's computer skills. Do not sign a student up and say, okay, here's your username and password and, and uh, let me know, uh, uh, how, how, you know uh, how you like it, you know? No, 
when a student comes to you and joins your class, sign them up, give them their username and password, and say, go to that computer right there and give them the information they need to succeed. Maybe you have a, a simple list of instructions, right? Uh, with the domain name to your school's uh, Canvas site, their username and password, and watch them actually navigate the computer. See how they use the mouse, right? Are they fluid? When they're entering the passwords, are they typing or are they pecking with their two index fingers? That'll, that right away will give you an idea of what that student needs to succeed. Okay, so be aware of that. Okay, evaluate each student's computer skill doesn't mean, hey, how long have you been using a computer? Do you like PCs or, or, or apples? You know, just, just watch them. Okay, put, sit them in front of a computer, give them a simple set of instructions and see if they're able to log on, okay? And you can respond. After that, you can respond accordingly to each individual skill level, okay? Give them a website orientation, okay? So once you get this site, it's, it's likely gonna be on your school's Canvas uh, uh, domain, you know? So uh, you're gonna have to tell the students how, how to find the course. Okay, and how to submit exercises and go back to the main menu. And uh, this is simple stuff, right? You can see the way I was doing it. I was moving my cursor to the left to get to the menu and then to the right to enter each uh, activity. Uh, navigation is just a habit, okay? So give students practical and technical support, okay? Technical means sometimes you might have to troubleshoot, okay? Uh, if a student uh, is in, in a normal circumstance, accessing the course really well on the cell phone, but one day is not able to, it's probably because they're just in an area where they're getting low reception, you know? And so these are the kind of things you have to uh, ask your students sometimes and, and help them navigate that, okay? Practical support means just, like I said, uh, submitting exercises, uh, navigating the course, emailing you, responding to email, okay? Group support. For me, an online class, uh, you know, you can, you can take advantage of uh, the students who are really proficient and have them work with the other students who are less proficient. You know, you know how in a regular ESL class, you always have students who are uh, very, some of them are more advanced and they're more willing and able to help their classmates. So, you know, uh, take advantage of that. Okay, those, the great students who are motivated and at a higher skill level, have them help the ones that are, are uh, a little bit uh, be below level and, and they'll be glad to do it, okay? And, and it helps uh, their self-esteem that they're able to assist in the class, okay? And communication, be open to your students, let them know that you're available, let, tell them how to, how to reach you, okay? Again, do not just give them the login credentials and say, good luck, let me know you have any questions, okay? Stay in touch with them, keep them motivated, okay? So this is a challenge to the teachers, okay? You know, we're, we're living in uh, uh, very interesting times, you know, but we have 24 seven access to information, right? And that includes learning, okay? So give your students the opportunity to learn any time of the day, any place they're at, they could be on the bus. They could be at the laundromat, right? Uh, get them into the habit of learning anytime, anywhere, okay? By doing that, you're gonna prepare them for the future, right? Uh, we know what's coming. What's coming is more, more, more technology, more digital skills in all areas of our lives, right? I'm sure some of you have heard of chat GPT, that new AI software that just 
was a huge splash that came out like two months ago, right? People are talking how it's going to just change education. It's going to change even online search, right? Google, uh, Google is being challenged, right? We thought their uh, their place in online search was uh, was uh, uh, you, you know uh, was solid, right? But uh, now it seems like their future might be in jeopardy by chat GPT. And how is all that going to affect education? Okay, let's get our students started. Okay, expand your blended class skills. Okay, Al along with your students learning to secure their future, you will, you will as well as a teacher. Okay, because education is changing, right? We know that. Okay, and that's why we're here today at OTAN TDLS, right? Okay, so to get access, everybody, uh, Take a picture of this with your phone, okay? You can just write a simple request to aecanvas at scoey.net. That's basically OTAN, okay? The, the, there are only two requirements that you are a California agency and you use the Canvas Learning Management System. If you don't, you can talk to your administrator about a, a, adapting it and OTAN will be glad to help you, all right? So uh, I can answer any open questions right now. You could feel free to uh, uh, unmute and just speak and we could talk for a few minutes, okay? Thank you for your time. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Feel free to unmute and just ask me a question. Thanks, Paul. Okay, with that, Michael? All right. Okay, no questions? All right, okay. Uh, Lauren, can, Lauren had a question, can individual teachers request access? Of course, uh, we'll just have to see how OTAN responds, okay? So yeah, uh, no, I, I don't believe it has to be an administrator, but, but you probably will have to coordinate with your IT person who is managing the learning management system. Okay, so uh, of course, policy is different at every school. You know, your your or agency. You know, your school might uh, have a policy where, as long as the teacher and the uh, IT person uh, have a shared uh, goal and the system supports it, you know, it, it might be okay to install the course. And in other agencies, it might require the administrator's approval. You'll have to find out how uh, your school district handles those kinds of situations, okay? Okay. More questions. Thank you, Francesca. Michelle, uh, Michelle, where are you from? What's, what school district? What school? Oh, uh, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for speaking. I, I love hearing people's voices. Yeah, uh, I'm from Eastside Adult Ed in San Jose. So our oh, school yeah. has purchased a Canvas uh, license for our students and teachers to use. So, um, you know, I and I really like um, the video. Uh, and I've been using uh, putting English to work to our low-level students for years, and it works pretty well. <laughs> I'm glad that they now you put it on Canvas. So I would like to expand it to our, our program uh, and then let introduce it to our teacher to use. But you know, I think we we'll probably need training for our teachers. So uh, is there a way we can request training? Of course. Okay, so look what Francesca just posted on, in the chat. I'm gonna read Francesca's post. OTAN offers a lot of Canvas training. So not only can you get free training on Canvas from OTAN, you could also request specific PETW uh, Canvas-based training, okay? So uh, make your request and let's get started, all right? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. More questions, we have a few more minutes, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, no promises, uh, but maybe in the fall, Okay, the fall, 
All right. Uh, Laura uh, asked when will PTW3 be available? All right, so uh, hopefully in the fall. So uh, so let's get our students started now with PTW1, because PTW1 has 20 episodes, 20 half hour videos and 20 units. That's a lot of content to get through, right? PTW3 has 24 half hour videos and units. Again, a lot of content. So let's get them started now and uh, by the fall, they'll be in level three. Okay, and that's the cool thing about distance learning, right? If you're taking it, this is what I've noticed through the years. If you're an ESL student and you're taking level 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, you know, you're, you're bound, your progress is bound and cannot move any faster than the semester system, right? But if you're doing distance learning and you're studying online at your own pace, based on your own motivation and ambitions, you can be at PDW3 by next fall and even finish level one, two, and three by December. Uh, whereas in the semester system, it could take up to three years. So let your students know. They can accelerate their learning and accelerate their progress, okay? Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. More questions, I have two minutes. So how many hours is the whole course? Traditionally, uh, students uh, earn 10 hours of attendance for completing the entire uh, unit, 10 hours per unit. That means they complete every uh, workbook exercise and they pass the unit test at 80% or better. That earns a student 10 hours of attendance. That's been uh, the, the traditional metric and it's still used today at, in distance learning at LAUSD. And how many units in a course? Uh, in putting these to work one, there are 20. In putting these to work two and three, there are 24. Okay, let me just say this. LAUSD invests the mo money in creating half hour uh, video courses. Uh, no one will ever, ever do that again. That is a huge investment. Today, there are, there are many online English courses, right? But they're easy to assemble, right? With throwing together some pictures, recording some audios, writing a few uh, sentence frames and substitution exercises. No one is gonna write scripts and hire actors and cinematographers and editors and, 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 and musicians to, to score. So, uh, you just know how how special these courses are and they're classics they've been around for decades and they've educated millions of people and in spite of all the money that's out there no institution will ever invest that kind of money in creating a course today so please let your students enjoy it and take advantage of it <laughs> 